Hello, James here from TDB, uh, continuing uh, my RIPE series. Um, this one is another one from that same order and that same series from Yunnan Sourcing, the 2019 uh, Mung Song RIPE. Uh, so, last time I think I brought on the Lao Man Yi from this series. Uh, so, I uh, hope everyone's, first of all, been staying safe and, and following the public health recommendations. Uh, I have not gotten a haircut in a while, so we can so sort of see how my hair is growing a bit. It's probably the most noticeable uh, visual difference between me. Otherwise, I've mainly been staying home, working, and drinking tea. Uh, so, uh, I had this tea in the morning with my wife. I am now on steep number five right here. I have just boiled this water, going to make steep number six while I talk. Um, so yeah, this is the Mung Song Ripe, uh, the, as well as uh, Hukai and Bulong and Bada. It's also in Mung Hai County. Uh, Mung Song, I believe, is at the more uh, northern point of Mung Hai County, so uh, getting closer to uh, Simao. Um, that was a little short. Actually, I'm going to do this a little longer here. Uh, just top that off. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's in that range. So it's interesting to try some of these more single origin ripes, which tends to veer towards blend, uh, category. Um, and I, I think it's reasonable that it does tend to towards the blend. I, I do like my ripe blends, um, Meng Hai, uh, tea factory sort of being the most classic of them. And I've enjoyed the teas from this series, the Lao Mani in particular. I don't know if it counts as part of the series, but really interesting tea, um, uh, just with that bitterness, very, very unique. So I hope people do get a chance to try that one. So definitely check out that episode if you haven't. Um, but yeah, all right. So steep that for maybe 30 seconds or so. We'll take a quick smell as soon as I steep this. Um, I'd say uh, the brew of this is maybe like a little bit darker than average. Sort of got that classy uh, sweet uh, wood slash cherry. I almost want to call it cherry wood, but I think it's more wood than it is cherryish uh, aroma to it. Um, pretty familiar. Um, these ripes don't have as much distinction for me in the aroma. Maybe someone like Denny could pull out more from something like that. But for me, uh, they tend to be fairly similar to one another. Um, cheers. Very soft, very smooth. I think this might be the creamiest of the uh, ripe teas. I think it may, uh, of the ripe series, I think it may also be the sweetest. Uh, part of that could be because I've been drinking um, the Lao Man Yi and the Boulong recently, but I think it actually is sweeter than uh, the other ones as well. Um, one thing I have noticed in this tea, not just in this session, but I have it in my notes, is that I think the harvest was a little bit later, and so the ripening process may have been a little bit later. Just a little bit of that uh, pile taste in this tea. Um, uh, it's not off-putting for me. For me, that's definitely not something that uh, will totally uh, uh, turn me off from the tea. But uh, it is a, probably a good candidate to let it sit for uh, another couple of months or so. Uh, also, I'm a little bit later in this session, being steep five and six, so... I don't really get that uh, pile taste quite as intensely as you might early on. So uh, there's a couple things. Uh, for me, that's not a huge knock on the tea, but maybe it's a slight knock on just drinking it now. Uh, I wouldn't have any qualms of just setting this aside for a few months. I'll probably just finish it because I don't care that much. But uh, for those that are looking out for that pile taste and want to avoid it, uh, then uh, then this one, I think it's worth noting, does have a bit more of that uh, than the other teas from this series. Yeah, very, uh, very creamy, very sweet. I would say, for me, this tea is a little bit simpler than a blend would be, and I can sort of see why you would want this in a blend. I've been drinking this in the Bada in particular uh, most recently, and those seeds are quite different from one another, and you don't usually see single origin 
uh, from those regions, particularly Bada, especially for ripe uh, too. So, so it's interesting to sort of have these. Uh, I'd say it's been fairly educational to just sort of try these and pick out individual characteristics and what would probably normally be combined with some Boulong and and some Bada into some sort of a ripe blend. Um, cheers. little more vanilla -y, this steep, still extremely creamy. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't have too much to say about this ripe, uh, really. It's, uh, it's enjoyable. Uh, for me, this definitely fits into the category of enjoyable. I could drink regularly. This is not one that particularly strikes a chord with me of standing out as something like the Bawang or even something really classical like the Bulong does. Um, but I'm totally okay drinking this. I enjoy drinking it. Uh, it will be no issue for me getting through it in the morning. I believe the price was quite reasonable, as is the case for most of Scott's teas. So giving it a 5.9 rating. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I think that just about concludes this in between. So let me know how you've been liking the ripe ones. I know a lot of people have these ripe, so I want to bring on teas that people do have and they drink regularly. So let, let me know what your impressions were of this tea, uh, if you've tried it before, or any of those in Scott's, uh, Scott's regional series. Uh, I appreciate that he created these teas, and uh, thank you all for tuning in, and uh, I will see you all next time.